So in uh, one of the forums I uh, visit regularly, there was someone who was using uh, DMD and um, he ran a full scan and um, a DMDE, unlike some other tools, uh, basically then shows you a list of virtual virtual file systems it finds and it will just list every possible file system it finds unlike some other tools who just automatically select the most dominant file system and i will show you what this can look like i have already um, scanned this drive so i don't have to wait for an hour or what to show you. So I select this XFET uh, deleted uh, partition. You would normally select full scan and then click scan. Instead, I'm going to click load because I've already scanned it. It's this one. And then we see this. And this is um, somewhat similar to the uh, person in the forum. Um, and he got confused by these results. And uh, I can imagine you get confused if you don't know what they are. Um, basically, if we scan a drive for lost files, we look for things like. Um, the file name, the start cluster of the file, the, the clusters that were allocated to the file, file attributes, that's one thing we look for. And those things are uh, stored in directory entries if, if, we, if it concerns a FAT-based file system, or in the MFT if it concerns a uh, NTFS uh, volume. Now, finding these things is one thing. So we can we can compile a list of uh, file names, and then we also get uh, the uh, at least the first cluster that was assigned to the file, and that way we can then recover the contents of a file. Um, but we have to deal with the fact that we get cluster numbers where these files are located and uh, say cluster 1000 uh, the, the file starts at cluster 1000 or 10,000 or 100,000 this cluster number only makes sense if we know which location on the disk we start counting from Cluster 1000 in itself is meaningless unless we know the size of a cluster and unless we know which position on the drive we have to start counting from. And this is what I call a virtual file system. So apart from finding these file entries, a, a recovery tool needs, needs to work out where a file system starts and it needs to work out what, uh, uh, which cluster size uh, was used. And it, it concerns a FAT partition here, an XFAT partition. And um, the extra trouble with an XFAT partition is that we there is a difference between the start of the partition and the start of the data area. And the data area is where we start counting clusters. So a file recovery tool needs to work out where the partition starts, but it also needs to work out the number of what we call reserved sectors. That, that's a, that's a, an area within the partition in which uh, uh, fi uh, for example, file system parameters are stored and um, the backup boot sector is stored. 
and, the, and, and that kind of uh, things. And then, uh, so it needs to work out how many sectors were reserved for that. And it then has to, then it reaches the file allocation table. Now it has to work out how large the file allocation table is. And if there is one file allocation table, or if there are two file allocation tables. So th there's a number of things the software needs to work out, uh, needs to find a solution for. And uh, this is what makes XFAT partition uh, uh, re uh, recovery a little, a bit more complex. And uh, if I click open volume par parameters, you see basically the number of these parameters it has to work out. So apart from finding files, file entries, in the case of XFAT, we call those directory entries, it needs to work out the file system, XFAT. It needs to uh, work out how, how large the partition is. It needs to uh, work out where to start uh, start counting clusters from. It has to work out where the uh, root cluster, uh, which is basically the branch of the folder tree, it has to work out where the root cluster is. So uh, yes, that's what it all has to do. Now, while it's scanning uh, an area of a drive to work out some of these par parameters, the easiest way is to find a boot sector of that partition. Because normally in the boot sector, we find, uh, for example, the cluster size, and we find the number of reserved sectors, and we find how many sectors uh, what's the size of the file allocation table in sectors? Now, it's not uncommon that there are... So, uh, if we then uh, uh, take a look at XFAT, we have a boot sector and we have a backup boot sector. So, it's going to at, at least find two... Boot, it's going to potentially find two boot sectors. Uh, well, common sense says, okay, if we find two, the first one will be the boot sector and the second one will be the backup boot sector. But we can assume that, but the tool needs to just, the tool actually needs to decide which one is the actual boot sector. Now, in this case, what uh, DMDE does, if, if it finds this uh, backup boot sector, it will just treat it as a boot sector. And it will, for example, take the number of reserved sectors from it. And if it does that, that basically ships the entire file system a couple of sectors. But still, this entry will be in this list. And, uh, but if we start with that incorrect assumption that it is a boot sector rather than a backup boot sector, then this will have consequences for file system reconstruction. And since the file system shifts a couple of sectors, uh, we will start counting clusters from an incorrect location. And so this will uh, have consequences for the file entries, the directory entries we find, and we look up the star cluster, and that will be off because everything shifted uh, slightly. So one of the things that uh, DMDE then does to uh, basically uh, validate a virtual file system is say we find a directory entry for a JPEG file, it points to a certain cluster number, and then with the par parameters it found, it will look up the cluster, it will read that cluster, and it will check if it actually finds the start of a JPEG file there. Uh, 
And so it has a way to validate the, the validity of a possible solution for the file system parameters. Now, most tools will just uh, pick the file system that comes out on top. So that is, it will tell you it has found an XFAT file system. Maybe it has found other potential file systems, but it just won't uh, show you them. Won't show them to you. And DMDE is different. DMDE basically uh, allows you to make your own decisions. And this may be useful, for example, if we are dealing with uh, a, a failed partition merge where someone tried to merge two partitions, where we start with two different sets of file system parameters uh, and it has to merge that. And then if a partition merge tool uh, crashes for whatever reason, then we basically are dealing with uh, three file systems, the original two file systems and the one file system it was trying to merge everything into. And that it makes sense uh, that we try to recover two different file systems within that one merged partition, or maybe even three file systems because some files were already merged to the new file system. Oh, okay, okay. The, the, you can you can imagine that it's that that can be a, com a complicated situation where uh, just selecting the dominant file system may not bring the best solution. Actually, now, but, but what I wanted to say with this video, uh, people get confused because they they see uh, the main results. I mean, DMDE calls it main results because it basically wants you to know you have to pick this one and you can forget about these ones if there is nothing extraordinary uh, that, uh, that happened. And uh, So basically what I want to say is don't get confused by the um, extra results you see in DMDE. Ignore the raw files, uh, the raw files uh, because raw files are just bringing you files with, uh, for example, uh, other generated names with uh, JPEG extension, uh, uh, MP4 extension. And you will have a lot of work sorting out which file is which, which file works, which file doesn't work. So these you ignore, this you select, you click open volume, and it will show you the volume. Um, and from this route, you will start recovering your files. And normally, so, and, and you approach this as a normal uh, uh, recovery, you uh, check a number of files and see if they work, yes, it works. Yes, it works. So you, you pick a number of uh, reasonably sized JPEGs, for example. Here is one of two megabytes. Yes, it works. And so if that works, it means basically it has, to, it has found the correct file system parameters. And if that works for these JPEG files, it, work, it will work for all the files within the partition. So basically you can go ahead and select that partition and start recovering your files. Uh, yeah, basically that's what I wanted to say. Don't, don't get confused by all these results, just hide them and go for the main result. If there is no main result, go for the one with the most uh, verified files. You can also, if we, now we're back at this list again, uh, the number of green, uh, the more green you have, the more likely uh, it is that this uh, solution will work. And this 
In this case, this is also backed up by the presence of a boot sector and a backup boot sector, C stands for copy. That's all absent in, in, uh, in these cases. So hope it helps someone, don't get confused, go with the main one. Uh, have a nice day and don't forget to like and subscribe, I always forget that. I know I don't make the most polished videos, but I hope they're useful anyway. Have a nice day.